Veronica from the Philippines is heading to Taiwan for a long-awaited life-altering surgery. Taiwanese University summer interns have recently finished their two-month internship at Daya TV. Welcome to Daya Headlines, I'm Laurie Chen, thank you for joining us. Remember the three pairs of conjoined babies from the Philippines? Well, recently, a 14-year-old girl came to ask Siji for some very specialized help. Veronica is from the Philippines, the island of Mindanao, more than a thousand kilometers from the city of Manila, where medical resources are difficult to obtain. In early August, accompanied by her math teacher and parents, caught up with the Hualien Siji Medical Center superintendent, Ling Xinrong, during his visit to the Philippines. She has been accepted and scheduled to head to Taiwan for a life-altering removal surgery. Let's check out her journey. With a very anxious mood, Veronica is finally ready to uncover the secret that she's been hiding for many years. If we check it and the deformities are located on the outside wall of the chest, then the surgery will be a simple one. A pair of underdeveloped hands and feet hangs from the chest of the little 14-year-old girl. This has been the reason why she has shunned herself from the public. Fortunately, her math teacher has sought out help for her. At that time, there was a member of the House of Representatives that came and saw us. He told us that Tsuji wanted to help us. We didn't know who Tsuji was, but since it was highly recommended by the representative, we decided to trust him. It just so happens that the Hualien Tsuji Medical Center superintendent, Ling Xinglong, was visiting the Philippines. So the family packed their bags and traveled over a thousand kilometers to meet up with Dr. Lin. The deformities do not affect the heart, lungs, nor the liver. It is not connected to the internal organs. She just has some stomach hernias that we can definitely take care of for her. So basically, removal surgery will not be too risky of a procedure to perform on her. After an extensive evaluation, Veronica will be ready to come to Taiwan for the removal surgery. The medical team hopes to give her the youthful glow that she so deserves. Staying in the Philippines, the Tima team held its first free eye clinic in Ormac, where they performed many cataract surgeries. Many patients who come from impoverished families or have financial struggles have received tremendous help from this event. With Siji's medical assistance, they were able to restore their vision and have a whole new perspective on life again. We shouldn't take our sight for granted. Cherish it while we still can. A female patient who came to undergo cataract surgery became almost blind after her youngest son's first birthday last year. After surgery, she feels really emotional because she could finally fulfill her wish to see her child grow up. Thank you for helping me. Now I can see the world again. Thanks for Tsuji's assistance. All of my family members feel very grateful. Another patient, the breadwinner of a family, works as a sugar cane worker and a street sweeper. She has a pinkish and triangular tissue growth on the cornea of her eyes due to long-term exposure to the sun. My aunt works very hard for her family. She even lost weight because she works too much. Seeing that her aunt has regained her vision, Emily feels moved as she burst out in tears. This sister duo who has hearing impairments and difficulties in communication has also received help from Tima's free clinic. They both suffer from congenital cataract. The girl who helps with translation on the side is their niece. She says that besides her two aunts, many of her family members have also received free surgery from Tsuji. For impoverished families like them, the medical help is very important in their time of need. While many believe that publicly funded medical training is an effective cure for solving the staff shortage problems in remote areas, others don't exactly see it that way. In fact, many participants believe going home to serve after graduation is like a dream come true. This is also a type of failure act on the part of the medical students. Without a dedicated driver, the only physician in the Taimali Health Center drives a special vehicle to provide mobile medical care.
Taiwanese language plays an important role in medical communication. Dr. Wang Yifan is from the Bunun tribe in Taidong. He just turned 36 and grew up in Taoyuan. His mother tongue is hardly spoken, but he studies Taiwanese because the population, Taimali, is one third indigenous and two thirds Han people. I'm very familiar with the patients here, and they like to chat, and this is how I learn about their conditions. At a hospital where the pace is much faster, you don't have such an opportunity. However, some patients at the hospital come a few times, but we don't follow them. Medical service he provides to rural townships includes treating colds, eye disease, and other chronic ailments like joint deterioration. This is the equivalent to internal medicine, external medicine, pediatrics, orthopedics, and even OBGYN, as there are no so-called specialists. It's a little harder because it is hard to go from pediatrics to geriatrics or adults, which I typically see. I hold my strength in the countryside. Also, authorities may offer courses which we undertake, which can help us readjust the direction of our treatment. Wang Yifan, after graduating from Zhiji University School of Medicine, is a typical publicly funded medical student who undertook his residency at Taipei Shenkong Hospital in Pediatrics. He later chose to serve at the Taimali Public Health Clinic. For him, he didn't feel that it was a hardship as he wanted to help reverse the lack of medical care in rural areas. I've been seeing Dr. Wang for a few years. I have seen the doctors here. He is the second one that I have seen here. Medical care is very bad here. I don't even feel there are doctors here, so they have to be brought in from other areas. If you need surgery, they have come from outside, and it's quite difficult. I think they are just lacking doctors and not equipment. The equipment is not that much better, only McKay Memorial Hospital. The lack of medical resources, especially on the Southern Cross Island Highway and 16 townships in Taidong County, and the four townships on the Southern Cross Island Highway, such as Taimali, Jingfeng, Dawu, Daren. Taimali is the place where the first sunrise takes place on New Year's Day each year. Fortunately, it has a long-term shortage of medical resources. The entire Taimali township has only five centers, including dentists, Chinese medicine practitioners, and public health clinics. Only six physicians serving more than 11,000 people. This is equivalent to just one physician to serve 1,800 people, which is far higher than the rate in Taidong County, which is 1 to 730. And the average in Taiwan is 1 to 507. The function of local health centers is the front line of caring for public health. For newborns, we need to do vaccination, and for adolescents, we do sex education. And for middle-aged people, diabetes prevention and long-term care for the elderly and even processing the deceased. We do all these services from the time they are born till they die. This year, Wang Yifan, who has served in Tai Ma Li for four years, only needs another three years to complete his service. His young doctor is planning his next move. I feel like I want to serve in the hospital. The sense of accomplishment that you feel in the hospital is much different. For new doctors or those who have publicly funded medical training, accumulating more skills through seeing more patients is hard to do in these rural areas. Here it is harder to see patients and the income is a lot less. After the enthusiasm of serving passes, few young doctors choose to remain in remote areas. For this reason, after completing their service, many move on and other young doctors will pick up the duty to attend to the rural health care system. The fact is that many young doctors have to go to big hospitals to pursue their specialty, meaning the government still has to offer incentives for young doctors to work in the countryside. 
At the Siji Dialysis Center in Penang, Malaysia, some patients are willing to help other dialysis patients who find it difficult to move about the facility. This kindness helps build strong bonds between all the different individuals during this difficult period in their lives. For the dialysis patients who have difficulty moving about, Lim Peng He is willing to push a wheelchair, pack meals, and help others. I see these dialysis patients who face difficulties, unable to walk and use my hands and feet. I want to help all dialysis patients get some water to drink or push them around in a wheelchair. Being helpful aids other dialysis patients who also share in the communal spirit and friendliness that pervades this dialysis center. Because of a car accident, I can walk, and I need someone here to help me with things. I'm very grateful to him, and after I'm healed, I'll also help others. I think that I can do it, and there's no problem at all. Doing this work is a blessing. The people who are able to give are the most blessed, and even if they are physically ill, they are still grateful to help others. In Taiwan, summer interns from different universities have recently finished their two-month internship at the Siji Humanitarian Cultural Center. To mark the end of the internship, they have put much effort into showcasing their production projects over the past two-month period. Let's take a look at what they've accomplished. The interns at Siji Humanitarian Culture Center are showing photos to mark the end of their internship. Among them, publicly funded student from Siji University, Chen Yating, who interns at the news department, had an experience that tested her conscience. When I was waiting for the patients' families outside the hospital, I knew that we cannot film footage nor take photos at the hospital. However, I saw two photographers who were filming the scene with their smartphones. Then the patients' families came out. I thought it was a good footage, but I struggled and asked myself whether I should film the scene with my smartphone. My current answer is that I should stand in the shoes of the patients' families and think whether I should use the footage or not. The interns also serve tea to thank their mentors. These students from different schools have interned for two months and they have finished a project which incorporates what they have learned. I chose this topic because it is related to my life. The topic is called periods and cramps. In the past, I did not know much about the medical field. However, after interning, I've learned a lot because we interviewed doctors and health specialists. We also hope to plant these seeds in the hearts of every student. After they adjust their mindset, they can make a difference at their workplace. After the internship experience, the students will be better prepared to spread wholesome stories and share humanistic spirit. It is freezing cold in South Africa during the winter time. That is why annually, Tsuji volunteers in Ladysmith continue to conduct winter aid distributions in the impoverished communities. As they give out rice to these families in need, they also deliver their best wishes for them in the upcoming months. Bags of rice are being removed from the truck to an open space at Sindhi Guanzi Primary School. As it's winter in South Africa, Tsuji volunteers are conducting winter aid distributions. This time, they will help 700 families in Umbuwani in Ladysmith. These two bags of rice will sustain my family of nine for one month. Thank you, Tsuji. Thank you very much. Most residents in this community are either seniors or children. Some of them are from the Soto. There's not many job opportunities in these communities. Pumelele can only make roughly three US dollars a day as a maid, so it is not easy to make a living. How long do you think this rice can be last? About two months. Thank you, Tsuji. Too much time. <laughs> Thank you. 
The other distribution is held at Emma's Money. This place is not very safe and it is difficult to find jobs. Many families have more than 10 people and they can only rely on government subsidies to get by. The age of my ID is 54, but I'm actually 70. Because my parents didn't report my birth on time, I still can apply for the senior pension. In this community, many people cannot claim government subsidies. The Rise Fund CG Volunteers is of a great help to these people. Are you happy? Are you everyone happy? Yes. Everyone is happy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Every family has received two bags of rice. The chief volunteer's kind gesture has brought smiles to the faces of the residents who no longer have to worry about food shortage. In China, the Civil Affairs Bureau of Xinjiang recently held an activity inviting the public to paint buildings in the old communities. Suji Volunteers was one of the organizations that has been invited as well. Although it was the first time that many female volunteers tried painting a building, they worked just as hard as everyone else. Let's see what the final results look like. Shenyang Suji Volunteers have been invited by the local Civil Affairs Bureau to participate in a volunteer project to refurbish the old community buildings. Nearly 20 volunteers came to help paint on this day. Although today is a work day and the weather is quite hot, many Zhiji volunteers still participated in this activity. This activity is similar to Zhiji's environmental protection events. The volunteers headed up the staircase with buckets of paint ready to get to work. Even the female volunteers worked diligently. It is hard to work on the staircases due to poor ventilation. The volunteers have to tolerate the paint odor as well as the hot weather. The volunteers are not afraid of hard work. They painted the walls near the staircases in our community buildings. They gave the community a new look. We hope to continue working with Ciji. After a days of work, 20 volunteers finished painting three separate 13-story buildings. Although they're soaked with sweat, they're filled with joy of helping the community. At the moment, Suji volunteers are organizing blessing ceremonies for the auspicious 7th Lunar Month in many different communities. This year, the themes are environmental protection and filial piety. Let's see how volunteers plan a variety of activities to raise the public's awareness. Ding Ling Tai shared her testimony on taking care of her son who has cancer, and there wasn't a word of complaint as she was full of love. I apologized to him for the discomfort of installing the nasal gastric tube, and he didn't say anything, but he shed a tear instantly. Yonghe Ciji volunteers hosted two blessing ceremonies in the community center, and many people's life story has deeply touched the participants. I can feel for her because my mother has also never left my side. I believe that every single mother has an unfathomable love for their children, and we children should express our gratitude any chance we get. Lu Zhou Love and Care Association also sent representatives to learn from Ciji volunteers. We admire Tsuji's efforts in environmental protection, so we hope that our volunteers can come to learn about recycling and practice it in everyday life to make the world a better place. Volunteers from the association visited the recycling station, and they've learned how doing recycling is a great way to prevent aging. When you serve others, you feel joyful, and being happy is the key to stay healthy because it improves your immune system. The Senior Academy in Shangyue Borough in Banchao invites residents to enjoy the blessing noodle soup, as well as promoting correct concepts of environmental protection. Many community members have agreed to avoid burning just money. I felt upset when I heard many people diagnosed with lung cancer recently. I believe the primary cause is severe air pollution. I pray that you can make the world more beautiful and clean so we can pass down to many generations so that all of our descendants have a beautiful planet to live.
Volunteers also promote environmental protection through this drama, hoping to raise the public's awareness and motivate them to practice recycling in everyday life. Continuing on with the topic of the auspicious 7th lunar month, more blessing ceremonies in northern Taiwan are coming up this weekend. A big group of volunteers are performing in the sutra adaptations that are going to take place. One of the volunteers, Li San Yi, who works in the computer science industry, has joined for the second year in a row. He always seizes every opportunity to transmit the Tsuji spirit to others. Oh! Li Chan Yi, who is in the front row, presents the power and beauty of the Jingzi drum team. My first impression about him is that he's rebellious because he had long hair and had a unique styles. However, after a year or two, he has not only cleaned up his look, he has become a gentleman. He has indeed become an outstanding person after Tsuji's cultivation, and I adore him very much. Many have witnessed Lei Chan Yi's change through time. He has taken time off from his business trip to visit refugee children in the Manor House School. He has cleaned the house of care recipients, and he has volunteered to take on many responsibilities in the auspicious 7th Lunar Month performance this year. Sister Ziyu often reminds us that we need to comprehend the meaning of each word when we are interpreting the musical adaptation of the sutra. The spirit presented by the whole drum team is what makes our performance special. His work has kept him occupied most of the time. Nonetheless, he still takes as much time as possible to participate in the performance because he didn't want to miss the opportunity. I've joined the performance every year since 2016. All of us understand the meaning of the interpretation and how it can touch others. Therefore, we are all willing to put in efforts to practice it. Through this activity, we hope they can continue to participate in the drum team, and they will learn about the Tsuji humanistic culture gradually, so that they can understand and practice the Tsuji missions. Through their drum beats and body movements, these young people hope to transcend the humanistic spirit and pass down the positive influence to their audiences. Taidong Tsuji volunteers went to the indigenous tribes to promote environmental protection concepts. A total of 50 indigenous tribal elders participated, and they were very open to the idea of consuming a vegetarian diet in order to save Mother Earth. It's so great to see everyone coming together to support the same cause. Please join us in protecting Mother Nature. Thank you for your efforts. See you next time.